Renee, you muted yourself. We cannot hear you. Let's try this, okay? Are we better? Perfect. All right. So one of my goals is, wait a sec, now I lost my, let me, there we go. One of my goals and targets of the day is to have you create a Kahoot game for your students to play that will be available tomorrow or really even this afternoon after you finish it. And we're also going to create a flip grid for your students to participate in as early as tomorrow if you choose. These are two of one of my, well, two of my favorites. Uh, Kahoot being one of my favorite games to play for the kids. Uh, and it is very easy to set up and to kind of deliver it even online. So if you're ready, I'm going to get out of this and go into my, um, my website. The first thing you're going to do, you're going to need to um, go to kahoot.com. Kahoot.com. And you will see, I already have an account. But if you do not, it's very easy to set it up. It only takes minutes. Um, where you log in, it will just ask you for some, some teacher stuff. And a quick as a wink, you will be ready to go. Um, and then once you log in. Renee, yeah. feedback from chat. We're not seeing your screen. So if you're sharing it, we can't see what you're doing. I was sharing it. Let me see. Let me try it again, Mike. Share screen. Yeah, it was probably when you had to switch over, right. Renee. It, it, that's, we see it now. You see it now? All right. So this is, this is kind of, okay. So I'm on my Kahoot page. Can everybody see that? It's there now. now I'm, it's there now. Okay, so you're seeing it? Mm -hmm. Good. All right, so once you do log in, set up your password and things like that, you're going to come to this screen. Um, and if you notice on the right-hand side over here, you will see this is my name to log in. This is my plan, which right now uh, Kahoot is free. Um, and this is, I am a member of the Central Intermediate Unit. I had to set up and tell them where um, my home base was. So you use your school address. And then you can list any interest if you want. I did not because I'm not that interesting. So if you look across the top, if you scroll across, across the top, you will see we are in home right now. If you click on the discover, and if I'm going too fast, please let me know. If you click on the Discover, it's going to take you to this website. Now, here are some um, games I scroll down that people have already made up and they've kind of published them to the public. So you have access to these games. So if you want to choose any of those, you would basically just click that game. It's coming. Click at that game, there you go. You can push play and it's going to create that. You don't have to recreate any of the questions. Those questions will just go in that game and you can assign it, okay? But let's say we want to look at something. I wanna find something about, let's say, addition. So I can click addition. And again, some games that have already been made for me. So it, you don't always have to reinvent the wheel. If it's there, you can preview them to see if you like them. So let's say we want to try this edition game. All right, here's the questions right here. You can see if you scroll down, you can take a look at all the questions that are in this quiz if you like it. You can say, okay, I don't have to make any, I don't have to do anything else with this. I want to play this and then it will be assigned to your group. Okay. So let's, let's um, go back to discover. 
all right? And you can pick really anything you want to. If there's not a game, then you know you have to make one yourself, okay? That is discover. I always try to check the discover first before I start planning just to see what other people have typed, the games that other people have thought of, and see if I can take any of those questions and bring it into my own game. So home is where you start. Discover is where you want to look first to see maybe someone already made your game. And then the next one, you have the little kebab and there's the word cahoots there. Okay, this is where you get to have fun and um, create your game. Okay, so you will see I have some that I have already created. Okay, these are kind of ones I've just recently done. And you see, once you, once you create it and you save it, it's always in your little bucket. So you can use those over and over and over again. But let's create a new one. So we're going to go up to the right-hand corner to create. And you will see, now this is some new features which I think are very cool. This asks you, what kind of Kahoot do you want to create? All right, you could you yourself, but you can see there is a teach with slides. There is a Kahoot for formative assessment. This is a great one. Practice spelling and adjectives with puzzle. Student selfie Kahoot. Get to know your teacher and then and introduce new topics with a blind Kahoot. And those are in the create a new Kahoot topic. I'm not going to go into each detail right now because we only have 45 minutes. Uh, but those are ones that you can kind of look at. I do want to show you one. So let's show you on how to play Kahoot with your, um, your spelling words or your adjectives. And what's great about this is you use this. And let me show you an example. Um, can use this and do your answers and then when you put them together they have to form the word okay so let me see let me scroll down here um here's one here if you look at the red blue yellow and green it spells ostrich they have to put those in the right order to get that word spelled correctly and of course when they see it the, the letters are all mixed up. So they kind of have to drag it up and put it in the right order on their Kahoot game. Uh, it's a lot of fun. Um, it tends to get really, really uh, crazy at times because you're trying to beat everybody on the time. But this is a great one for spelling words. This is, I've done this for them with um, vocabulary words. They have to try and figure out what they're putting together first. And then we look at the definition. So puzzle is a lot of fun. Uh, to play with and you can use it. I mean they use it for spelling. I have used it for vocabulary You can really even put it in the order of the the story elements as well the beginning middle and, and end you can do that as well So that's one um, That's just one part of Kahoot that you can play around with I'm gonna go back. I'm gonna go back to my create folder all right, so let's say I want to, I just want to make a new Kahoot. So I'm going to click an image. Now, let's see, I want to talk about, let's see, I want to talk about the wind today. All right, so I want them to know, um, oh, let's see, um, tell me about the wind. Okay, maybe I want them to, um, list what what exactly we need to have a good tornado. I know that sounds kind of crazy, but so I want to get onto the image, and you can put pictures in yourself if you have one on your computer. Great, you can add a video YouTube as well. But I'm just going to go into the ones that are already made, and I'm going to look for the word wind. I'm just going to type that in. And you can see it's picking up some for me. 
And so you can see they already have a lot of pictures about wind already in their database. So you can choose one of those, or if you want, you can bring one in of yourself. You can bring one in that you like, maybe that's topic, talking about your topic. If you're doing a, um, a book report on the giver, you can have you know, certain scenes from the giver or the, the title page of the giver. You can share things like that. Um, let's just do, I'm just going to take this one because it's kind of cold. And you notice when I click it, it just automatically comes on. Now, if you look over here to the right, as the kids are doing this, you can have an image reveal. You can have the whole picture show up at one time, or if you wanted to do this, it could be like a puzzle, and they, that's not a time. You just automatically, they just automatically come on, so they try and figure out what it is, okay? So, I'm gonna go back to the original, though. And then, you're gonna scroll down, and now you see down here, there's a red, a blue, a yellow and a green. This is where you're going to type your answers. Okay, so again, my question up here, tell me about the wind. You can change that at any time if you want to, but I'm going to put um, it, it blows your hair. Okay, now if that is the correct answer, all you have to do it's just correct answer. All you have to do. Then you're going to enter it, and then you're going to go to question two. One thing I will tell you: you can set this up. It could be a two-answer clue. It could be three answers shown or four answers shown, as it is. If you only want two answers, like it's a true or false question, make sure you go from left to right. You can't go top to bottom because you notice it says add answer two on the blue. So that's gonna bring up number two for you. So let's say, um, um, let's say it comes with rain. All right, it could, but it doesn't always. So I'm not gonna list that as a right answer. Okay, so I'm just gonna do two. You can do four, like I said. Make sure you have chosen which answer you which answer is the correct answer and the one that you will be looking at, okay? So you will see that is all done. That is all done. It's ready to go, all right? I have to do this. Up at the top, you will see it says done. I'm going to click done. Now, we're going to add the finishing touches. So we're going to um, title it. So I'm just going to title it wind. And then if you wanted to give a description, Take this Kahoot game about wind. You could do that. You could put whatever you want. All right, when you're all done typing and adding those finishing touches, you're going to click continue. And it says, yay, the Kahoot is ready to be played. Now, there's two buttons here. One, test this Kahoot. That means before you post it and publish it, if you want to test it, you can do that. There's the phone as to exactly what the kids are going to see. Um, the game pin, let me scroll down. All right, we're going to play a classic, okay? So here's the game pin right here. All right, you can hear that great music. When you type that game pin in, and hit enter, all right? It's gonna ask you for a nickname. Please make sure, I would say, just tell them their name. Okay, go. Now you will see, once they, the students do their name, I'm gonna, um, you're going to see my name come up, okay? So we're ready to start. I'm gonna click start. This is what they're going to see on their phone or on their computer screen. Okay, tell me, they're gonna see, tell me about the wind, and then you have one or two ones you can choose. I'm going to choose red, and let's see, okay? Red is the correct answer. And I have just been awarded 868 points.
okay? That is how this game is played. That is how you can view it, okay? So let me go back. Yep, I'm gonna exit the game. All right, so what I would suggest to you when we create these, let me go back. That was my test. Sorry, there goes the wind. <laughs> if you scroll down, you will see, um, you can do the personalized learning, okay? You can have a friendly nickname generator, whereas you can generate that. Lobby music, you can turn that off. You can change the order of questions if you rather. You can randomize the order of answers. Um, and you can show minimize intro instruction. It's totally up to you. I usually just leave that go um, because I have, I have it put how I want it, okay? So that is the test one. All right, so if I go back up here, there we go. All right, so let me, there we go. All right, so we've tested this Kahoot, looks good to us. So now we're gonna share it with others, okay? This is where you can now um, send it and assign it with the kids. So if I click share with others, you're going to see what pops up. You have quite a few. Mike talked about Google Classroom last week. Uh, we have Microsoft Teams, um, Tweet, which I'm not sure, or Facebook Share, which I'm not sure of that either, or you can email them. I'm sure most of you guys will be doing um, Google Classrooms. So we're just going to go to Google Classrooms, and it comes right up. If you were with Mike last week, this kind of looks familiar. I'm gonna share it to a classroom. This is my old, Mary, oh, old maiden name. I'm going to create an assignment and go. And you will see, I'm going to title it Wind. Renee, right now we're still seeing your original window. So if you oh, click great. classroom and it open in a pop-up, you'll have to redo your share. Oh, okay. So let me do, let me do that. And then let me do new share, right, Mike? How about that? There we go. That's what okay, we need to right. say, yes. All right, so you can, um, I'm just gonna title it wind. I'm going to give the instruction of, please take this Kahoot. And then you see right down here, that's already embedded. So all they have to do is click that and it's going to go right to there. Mike, can you see that? Yep. Okay, great. Well, all I right. think I think we, well, no, if it opened in a new window. So what's happening, Renee, is you're sharing just a certain browser window. If you oh, do okay. a share and share your entire desktop, you won't have to worry about this happening again. Share my entire desktop. Yep. So is it, like the is that it? Let me see. Is that it? That looks right. Now we're seeing, okay. yeah, that, yep. I think okay. we're good now on pop-up windows. So you can see then they're going to play it. There will they will be waiting for you though when they play it. Okay. I want to show you one other thing in Kahoot that I have to go back on my mic. My connection is unstable. This is great. All right, so if I have this, are you seeing this, Mike? Yes. Okay, so if I have this one, okay, and I want to play it, you can see now there's two different buttons, okay? One says teach, and that's exactly when you're gonna assign it at that time and all play together. Okay, which is great. I use this a lot when I was in the classroom setting. 
This other one, the assign, I think would be, be very beneficial for you as online teachers now that you could do with your kids. You can assign them this challenge. So let's say I'm going to give them it tomorrow and they have until Thursday to finish it, okay? You can pick the day of the week you want. If I'm, if I'm selecting, if I'm giving it to them tomorrow, maybe I, I want them to, it's a tough one, so I'm gonna give them three or four days. You can assign it as much as you want, okay? So I'm going to do it on Thursday since I'm assigning it tomorrow. And then you can also give the time. When do you want them to be done? Okay, so let's say 12 p.m. Sounds good. You see the question timer is still on. That's another thing. You can set that timer to 20 seconds, to 10 seconds, to 30 seconds. It's whatever you feel your learners will need to be successful at this game. Okay, uh, I'm going to create it. Now watch what happens. All right, you can see it now comes up. Oh, there's a challenge link. There's the challenge page. Look above it, it says deadline, three days, one hour, and seven minutes. So again, I'm going to, you can do three different ways. I'm gonna do the Google Classroom again. I'm gonna choose my class. I'm gonna choose an action, which I'm gonna create an assignment. You could make this as an announcement if you want. It's up to you. Go. And again, let's, let's make this another wind one. And the instructions are optional. It's up to you. So, we're, we're still stuck on the previous screen. Okay. This is... Now, oh, there we could see it for one second. Oh, okay. There for a moment, so. Okay. All right. So let me, let me see. Can you see it now? No, we're still on the blue screen that says invite players by sharing the link. So All again, right. your pop-ups are, are not visible, I don't think. I wonder why. Well, all right, so let me try this. I'll have to, I'll have to figure this out, Mike. So can you see my classroom now? Yes, we see you sharing that now. Okay, so I'm gonna create an assignment. And this is just like the other one with one difference. If you look to the right, you're going to see the assign. Okay, and you can also, when you push that, you have assigned it. So now, if you want to view it, Oops. If you want to view it, you can see it's right, it's right there. So when I click on it, go up to instructions, there's my instructions. All they have to do is click on that and it brings them right up to that game. Um, so that is Kahoot. Um, I'm, I want to give you guys a couple minutes to at least try and think of one. So if I go back, if I go back and type in Kahoot, Mike, are you seeing this? Yes. Okay. Um, if you don't have a login, please set that up. And I'm going to, um, um, Mike, I was going to multiple share, but I don't have that. So I could see their screens, see what they were thinking about. I guess they could do it in chat, right? They can um, tell me what they're thinking about doing their Kahoot on. Yeah, it's the multiple screen share is off right now. I can turn it on if ah, you'd like them okay. to share their screens. Well, I, they could just do it in chat if that's all right. So in chat, show me some of the um, Kahoot topics that you think will be kind of cool. Oh, COVID-19. 
pain, that sounds Yes, the platform that looks on. And if you look, there are some already on COVID-19 there um, that you can look. Oh, that's great, Aunt Amy. Slowly revealing an artwork. And you know what? I've seen those too. They um, there's one on there that has different artists. I thought of Diane's son. Um, they have the picture and they have to try and figure out who the artist is before that puzzle is complete. So that's kind of cool too. Very good. Okay, great. Simple machines, music notes, great. Great. All right, so great. I see some great ones coming in. Um, that is Kahoot. And honestly, you can use that literally with any idea that you have. And again, if it's not already done, then you can be the first one and set the stage for everybody else to follow. So that's Kahoot. The other one I wanna talk about is another one that is a great, um, great one to do. And it's called a flip grid. So, you're going to go to flipgrid.com and you will see this comes up, Empower Every Voice. And you will see the, there's an educator sign up. And again, if you've not used this, you're gonna have to sign up, it is free. Um, but if you scroll down, you can see some of the different things that people are doing with it, which is very cool. It is a almost like a video that they can record themselves answering the question that you posed. Um, and I will say my kids, when I taught, loved it. Um, this is where their creativity really, really came out. So let's do a little bit of flip grid quickly because this one is not hard at all. So I did my sign up. So it's it stays because I'm old. I have them remember my password. Um, and you will see, again, up at the top, Mike, you're seeing this, right? Yes. Okay. I just want to make sure now. Um, there's my activity, which you can see I've launched four grids. I've had five topics created. I've had two total videos. Two videos this week kind of gives you an outline exactly what you've done. My grids is exactly what it means. There's my grids that I've done so far. So it will list again, just like Kahoot, everyone that you've done and saved, it will stay in your bank, okay? Which is what we're going to go to add new grid. If you click on add new grid, you're going to see, let's make a grid. Now there's a couple required things that you need to do. Okay, Mike, are we still good? Looks to be, yep, All let's right. make a grid. Thank you. So we're gonna name your grid. So this is what I wanted you to do. Think of something that you can pose a question to your students um, and have them do. I'm going to do, um, this is gonna be a STEM, since I'm the STEM, a STEM girl. This is gonna be a STEM grid, okay? Now down here, if your students have the school email, that's where you wanna assign it to. I do know some students, some schools that the kids don't have a school email, email whether it's like kindergarten, first, second, uh, but they have ID, you can assign them this through their ID, okay? I have never done the public and PLCs. I've just always usually done the school email. So I'm going to click on that. You will see this will be the code but it will come up automatically, let me show you. All right, now add a school email because I signed up for this through our inter intermediate unit, that is the email that comes up, okay? If you click, if you have another one you want to do besides, you can add that as well. But, so now we're ready to start. And if you see, whoops, let me go back. If you see, oh, 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 let me do it quickly. Um,
if you see now right here, this is the Flipgrid that they're going to see, okay? Now it says copy, which we will do that, but we're gonna go to our grid now because we have to make one. Here's my stem, okay? So let's say I wanna add a topic on this stem. How about I gave them a challenge? I'm going to give them a challenge and it's going to be lava lamps for a second grade. Okay, so my second graders are gonna take a look at this. All right, please um, watch the video on All right, please watch the video on lava lamps and then watch or uh, record your own. Okay, so that's the topic. Now, you see down here, I could add my video of how I made my lava lamp. So they will watch that and then they will be creating their own. Okay, there you go. You can upload a video, you can record your own video, you can grab one from anywhere really and then you can stick it in there as well, okay? So I'm gonna create that topic. Now, my topic is ready, I'm all set. I'm gonna copy this. Let's see, where can I put it? I can put it on Remind, Google Classroom, Microsoft Teams, so I can share it to any one of those, okay? You can also um, do a QR code as well, okay? That's that, okay? So again, I'm going to share it to Google Classroom, Mike, are you seeing this good? Right now, I still see that your topic is ready and your mouse is over the Google Classroom button. Okay. So if it so, opened in Classroom, I, uh, we're not seeing that. All right, let me, let me move it again. I love technology. All right. How about now? Can you see me now? Yep. Okay, great. So I'm going to choose the class, which maybe I'll put it, well, I can put it still in Jackson one. Choose the action. I can create an assignment and it's a go. Okay, so you can see again, let me make it bigger. You can see again, it's going to be STEM. Um, I can put lava lamps and then here it is again, all they have to do. I'm gonna assign it. Now here's what's great, let me show you. Whoops. Okay, so here's my STEM. If I click on this, and here's my instructions, here's my flip grid, all I have to do is click on that, okay? They're gonna log in with their email. This is mine. And here's your STEM, okay? Please watch a video on lava lamps. Now, do you see that plus sign there with the green around it? This is where your kids will be downloading their video. So you're going to click on that, ta-da. Here comes a video, all right? And of course, it's a video of me. You see the red button down below? That means record. And you can look at all these other ones. This one, you can grab an emoji sticker face and use that if you want to. Let's, let's do this one because I love STEM. If you wanna draw you, you can do that as well. The kids can do it. Maybe you want them holding their lava lamp water bottle. You can draw that as well. You can make the background a different color if you want. All of those different things. Or you could clear it and let's say, you know what, I wanna make a video. So you're gonna hit the record button, three, two, one. You're gonna say, I made my lamp. I put on the bottom, water the top. I put food coloring in and because the oil molecules wanted to stay with the oil, 
it did not mix with the water. So you can ask them to explain their question as well. When they're done, they're gonna push stop. They're gonna go to next. There you go, you're listening to that. Okay, then going to X out of that. Are you sure you want to exit the recording? Well, we don't want to. I'm I mean, I want to take that. I want to push it on. You can add a sticky note if you'd like, okay? But once that is done, then you're going to upload your recording, okay? It will be on here. Um, let me show you if I can go, well, no. Once you upload it, their picture will be right here. You as the teacher can Click on that and you can hear it, okay? Um, let me try this one more time. I don't know why it didn't record. All right, so we're going to record it. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, I'm stopping it. Okay, I should be able to hit next. <laughs> okay. All right, so we're going to download it. Yeah, let's stop, let's, let's stop. Please, that's enough. All right, so you get there my flip response. Okay, so me as a, I'm gonna pause that, thank you. So as a teacher, uh, that's what I would see when it comes up, okay? Um, all right. Whoops. So that's what they're seeing. That's what they're recording. And then it's going to show up on yours. Let me see if I can get, because Mike made a wonderful one. Can you see this, Mike? Am I, um, do I have to reshare it? There we go. Let me reshare it. Okay, so you can go in and everyone you assign, you will see, you will see who has, it's coming, um, who has said what on Flipgrid. So there you will see my responses. I have two. Um, let me show you mics if I want to watch it. All you have to do is click on. So the reason that you uh, people participants are not hearing the sound is because when oh. you share your screen, you have to check a box that says to share your computer sound. But you can you can see just how lovely I am. Okay. All right. Okay. Hmm. So that um, is kind of what it will look like. Then if you want to add comments or detailed feedback for Mike then you would just type in there, Mike, you did an awesome job. I loved your video. Um, or if you have any uh, critiques, you could do it during that time. So that is what Flipgrid is. Um, honestly, it's a lot of fun. Your kids, I'm sure, would love responding to that. And again, I have used it for um, just providing the summary of a story. I have used it for countless STEM things. I have used it for um, um, giving me the scientific method of something. Um, and I've used it as um, describe your, your project, you know, tell us how it worked, um, things like that. As a matter of fact, this is what I would have used had we been doing Connect the Connect Challenge online. This is probably what I would have used. So it is an awesome, stepping stone for your kids to provide some new and creative ways to retell instead of writing and um, filling in um, paper and things like that all the time. This is a lot of fun, but I will say probably the best you can do is just get on and play with it for a while. Um, and again, I'm my time is almost up. Renee, so, there's some three really good questions in the chat yes, right now. Um, right. 
Uh, one, I'm going to work backwards just because the screen scrolled away. Can you okay. record yourself reading and asking questions and then the students answering those questions? Yes, you can. You can, um, you can record yourself. It would be in your topic. And then um, you can't stop and have the kids then answer, but you could just say question number one is blah, 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 blah. So then whenever they record themselves answering, they would say question one, I believe the answer is da, 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 da. So yes, you can record yourself. The second question is, can the students see the other students' videos? Yes, um, if you go back, I hope you can see me. They can't see, um, they can't see what they're saying until they click on it. Um, so if Mike were to view this, Mike could see mine as well as him. And uh, I will, I'm sorry, yeah, go ahead. I will say a lot of, um, uh, I've done a whole courses on, uh, and we've done this just to kind of introduce ourselves. So we're able to see, I'm able to see every person that we had to do like a two minute introduction to ourselves. So we could, I could click on everyone's grid and listen to them talk about themselves. And do the other question was, do students have to sign in or once you share this with them, can they just quickly go in and record their video? Yes. Once they click, once they click, once you assign it to them, they will click it up. And um, this will, their assignment will come up to them. So if this was their assignment, this is what they would see. Uh, and then they would scroll down and they will get that plus button and they will record themselves. So they don't have, they don't have to sign in then. It just takes them right to the assignment. So this is right. a, a very right. quick thing to do. Yeah. They have that um, link that they just click right on. Any other questions? What would you guys do with this flip grid in your classroom? What would you assign it? As, uh, how would you assign it as a, um, a classroom assignment? You are able to unmute your microphones participants. So if you'd like to tell us instead of using chat, go sure. ahead and unmute and give us some ideas. From the chat, Allison says she really likes the read and respond idea where the teacher reads and the students respond. Yep, great. I've, I've even seen it where they have read, especially with the little kids, they have read up in the last two pages and then they read them and how do you end the story, which that's a great thing to do too. It's great interaction. Cindy is mentioning the, uh, this could be a way to share a STEM challenge. So you could probably absolutely. show the students something and then they record the results. Yep, absolutely. As a matter of fact, I, I don't want to bring my daughter into it, but that's exactly what she's doing this week for her 30-minute um, STEM special that she's doing. I also saw one, it was a high school group, uh, and I've never done it, but I thought it would be challenging. They started... Um, and you had to do it in order, but they started, one person started a story and, only, and stopped it a certain way through, and then the next person created the next story. So as you went on, you had to listen to everyone's Flipgrid grid uh, in sequential order, and then you would respond by creating your own. So it, it was kind of a, a cool way to create a new story. Stacy mentioned in chat that she had the students share their make writing projects so they could see what they came up with. Oh, that's great. That's great. Yeah, there's a lot of uses to this. Um, and the, the more you use it, the more comfortable you get with it. I think the more you'll find that there's a lot of other possibilities that maybe we've never even seen or heard. Anyone else have any questions or how they plan to use it? I, I think this would, could also be a nice tool for uh, music teachers, uh, performing arts, especially right. in elementary levels, because it's just a short little video. So you could have an assignment, you know, play a you know, B flat scale, and then the sure. kids could record that. 
Absolutely. That's great. That's great. Uh, guys, a great question about the length of the videos because there is a limitation. So Allison right. was wondering how long can the videos be? They can be 30 seconds. Now, if, if you if you pay the premium, it might be more. But what I have found has been Yes, yeah, Stacy. there is a QR code that you can put on there too. Question about the video length again for more clarifications. Can students add more than one video? And yes. are the yes, teachers also limited to 30 seconds? No, the teacher, uh, when, what I would do, I would go in and create a video and then just post that. Remember when I said you could embed a video and there were all those different kinds? Um, I would just go in and do my own video and then post that. And students can get on multiple times. Yes. So for clarification, Allison is asking in chat, could it, could a teacher then do a 10 minute read aloud, uh, reading, and then the students would respond with their 30 seconds. Sure. Absolutely. And again, if you, when you do this, when you do the Kahoot, we would love to see what you've done. Um, Mike has set up a, a resource page that I'm sure Mike, they could share it on that as well. Absolutely. On our mini site that you used to join us today. There's yes. a resource tab that you can submit resources and also see what other people are sharing. Um, you know, at, at this time, I think it's really important that we share with one another and help build a, a Absolutely. Bank of authentic resources that we can use right away. And it builds a great resource to some of those teachers that might not know what else they could do with it, especially some of the, the specials like the art and the music might brought up some great ways we could use that as well. So another question going back to Kahoot now in the chat, there's a question on Kahoot. Can you see student answers after the quiz is completed? Yes, that's one thing I didn't do. If you go back to report, uh, which was another button up at the top with home discover Kahoot, the last one was reports. You can see um, how your students did. You could see the questions that were most missed and who missed them. And you can also save those as well. I use them a lot of times to plan my next Kahoot lesson or even what I was gonna do with um, the reinforcement time that we had at school. So <laughs> Pat's asking a question, is there a way to see the students responses and check for appropriateness before other students see them? No, unfortunately there is not. So um, you, one, you can look at it and if you deem it not appropriate, then you can edit it and delete it. Yeah, my experience with this stuff, I, I know that that's a concern especially when the, the kids get a little bit older. I know middle school age, junior high, high school can be a little squirrely with answers. Um, I always just set the expectations early on and remind them that whatever is in that student code of conduct still applies to these online activities. Uh, and now that we're in online lear learning, I'm sure that all of you have in your codes expression violations and things like that. So it, you know, honestly, if they are silly enough to record something that is obviously them and place it on something, um, you have all the, the evidence right there. So uh, I think a couple of times in my career, I had to make examples of people and that behavior ended pretty quickly. So don't forget all the rules still apply here and just let them know up front. I can tell who did it. Right. Uh, I see who, who made the funny, terrible responses. And, you know, if we need to get down that road, we'll do it. And I want to, um, 
um, correct myself too, it's 90 seconds per flip grid, not 60, or not 30, 90. So Greg and Stacy are both adding some comments in the chat um, about how you can kind of control some things. And also Greg said that he thinks you can, you can get up to 10 minute total for student videos, but they have to be done in 30 second clips. Right. So they can't yeah. record a, a full length 10 minutes, but they can do 30 second clips. Right. Yeah. That's a lot to say. <laughs> Hey, Mike, Renee, it's Greg. Yeah, yeah. Hey, now, I think you can, I think the kids, you, you have the option to set a 30 second video for the kids or a one minute video or a minute and a half video up to 10 minutes. So no, they don't have to record it in 30 second intervals. Oh. You know, when you're creating the topic, you can set that to be up to 10 minutes. Got it. Okay. So the increments right. for the adjustment are in 30 second intervals. So you right. can't do one minute and five seconds. <clears throat> Correct. Gotcha. Okay. Thank you for clarifying. Sure. Oh, the default will always be 90 seconds. I'm reading that now. The default will always be 90 seconds. Okay. That's great. Thanks, with Greg. All, and with all these online tools, they almost all have a button somewhere that, you know, the, the FAQs, the frequently asked questions, um, also, the, the thing that I found really helpful with all these online tools is to, I always click that pricing button, even if I'm yeah. using the free version, because it always shows a table of what features are available in the versions. So if you're thinking, I wonder if there is a way that I can moderate these responses, that may very well be a feature of that $3 a month level. So yeah. I find those two buttons, the, the frequently asked questions or support and then also the pricing grid because it tells you what features are available to the, the free people. And I'm big on free. Free, free, free. Is it possible to play Kahoot as a group when on Zoom or do you have to answer individually? You certainly could launch the Kahoot uh, just showing that screen with the code to the students and uh, you can even put them in teams. Yes. So they, you could definitely host that that quiz show from your Zoom session. Right. I've just found online, it's kind of easier to do it as an individual, just because then each student has their own um, device to control. But yeah, you can work in teams. It is a lot of fun, Allison. Mike has the job of, of doing Google, but I, I'm, I'm kind of fortunate I get to do the fun stuff, games. Yeah, I, I think Google's lots of fun. Speaking of Google. I was going to say the same thing. Speaking of Google, don't miss tomorrow's Google Forms quiz session at 1030. How'd you like that announcer voice? There you go. Cheese ball. Jennifer, please let us know what you're planning on using it for. Please use those resources and, and put your own in because we'd love to see what all of our great IU teachers are doing. Okay, guys, it looks like Janelle had an issue. She said she created a mini Kahoot. The screen popped up asking her to upgrade to see her game. You see, that shouldn't be. That shouldn't be. Mm-mm. I'm not sure what I did wrong. I just created something mini and um, created the game and then it said, please upgrade. All right. So then um, it took me to a new screen, um, clicking on home and I can see myself there, but I can't find what I created. <laughs> I mean, it, it has my plan and beside plan, it says upgrade. Yeah, that, um, that's something we probably have to get back to you on. I don't know that yeah. we'll, we can figure I'm, that I'm out. I'm just looking at it now. I don't know. Um, what What's your plan say right now? It says upgrade? Yeah, it has my name and then uh, my username, and then it says plan upgrade. Um, and then it has member of create a team.
Did you say so you signed up and logged in and everything? Yes. Hmm. I don't. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe they're offering because of the uh, school online. School a, suge lockdown. a suggestion coming from uh, the chat is that there is support on the Kahoot site that you must. You may be able to open a chat window with Kahoot and ask okay. them to explain why they could probably look at your actual Kahoot game and figure out why it was saying you had to update or check okay. your account. Yeah, there's there is a little chat yeah. in the lower right corner. There's a green right. bubble with uh, with two dialog boxes, and you can click on. Thank you. Yeah. Hmm. That's a new one, Janelle. Yeah, and Prella is mentioning in the window too that um, she had asked them to up to get that free upgrade that's being offered for teachers, and that she was able to do that through the chat. Yeah. So it could be something you can fix very quickly. Yeah. Okay. We have about three minutes left. Does anyone else have a? A question or a great comment? Yeah, a lot of those, um, Jennifer is saying her student teacher did a bunch of math review games using Kahoot. And truthfully, once you set it up and you kind of publish it, it is out there. So it, they kind of stay on. You know, you can pull them from anyone that has published it. And I also used a lot of these. Uh, there were some great review questions for our reading series that we had at the school I was at. And they were already on there. So it was a great, uh, great way to, to review for a, a test too, for um, reading. And of course, we did some math facts using those. Um, it's a lot of fun. Well, I just want to thank everybody. That was, um, I appreciate all 36 of you uh, being on. And um, I know most of you are starting your, your online teaching today. So I appreciate you taking the hour of your time and spending it with us. And hopefully we can give you some ideas to kind of ease your online learning for your students and having fun at the same time. So please let us know. And don't forget we are... We are offering online virtual office hours. We had uh, we have daily from nine to nine thirty, and again from three to three thirty p.m. So if you have if you start trying these things today or going forward, please visit us. Just drop in. You don't have to schedule it. We'll just be there and we'll be able to to help you. So we didn't have any takers this morning, but I'm guessing as you begin to try some things, you may want to stop in for those. Those are linked directly on our page that you use to reach today's session. And Allison says, keep the ideas coming, please. If you in your, once you get on to, to really get involved with your students, if there's something you feel you want to try and you're not familiar with it, please reach out to us. Like Mike said, we will be happy to, to um, kind of come along with you and, and hopefully get it, get it running for you. I just added direct links to our site and to the virtual office hours that you can access to click on those and join us in those morning and afternoon sessions.